Welcome to Seize the Mains by Raj Malhotra's IS Academy. I'm Sirbi Sardana and I'm taking this daily answer writing series Monday to Friday at 9 p.m. for UPSC and State Civil Services Mains Preparation. If you're new to this initiative, you can download the timetable till May 3rd from the link in the description below. Also, you can download the entire compilation for season 1 from the link in the description below. Moving on, today is day 40 of Seize the Mains and our topic is from GS Paper 4, Ethics Case Study. So without further ado, let's begin by reading what is the Ethics Case Study. I request that you read along with me and uh, the steps we will follow for solving case studies is that we will read it twice and we will note down what points do we have to address in this question and how to proceed for the case study. So, Rampura is a remote district inhabited by a tribal population. It is, it is marked by extreme backwardness and abject poverty. Agriculture is the mainstay of the local population though it is primarily subsistence due to the very small land holdings. There is insignificant industrial or mining activity. Even the targeted welfare programs have inadequately benefited the tribal population. So, talking about this first paragraph, what we will do is just notice the words, the terms that are in yellow in the first paragraph. The first one is extreme backwardness and abject poverty. So, when you are addressing the case study, the solution for this first problem has to be there. What will be the solution for extreme backwardness and abject poverty? By giving employment opportunities, by using the current knowledge that you have about tribal areas and what are the benefits that government provides to tribal areas to generate employment opportunities and to reduce the poverty. So, the first problem would be this. The second one is subsistence. Note down the term subsistence agriculture. That agriculture is being practiced on a very small patch of land by all the families to meet their needs for local consumption, for their own consumption. So, here you can introduce reforms that can be carried out in that subsistent agri subsistence agriculture or how agriculture can be improved. So, this is your second point. The third, uh, the third term is even the targeted welfare programs have inadequately benefited the tribal population. So, welfare measures that are being carried out, they are not benefiting the tribals effectively. So, this is your third clue that this is your problem and this has to be addressed by monitoring the welfare programs that are being carried out there and by helping the tribals getting efficiently benefited from them. The next point is, in this restrictive scenario, the youth has begun to migrate to other states to supplement the family income. Plight of minor girls is that their parents are persuaded by labor contractors to send them to work in the BT cotton farms of a nearby state. The soft fingers of the minor girls are well suited for plucking the cotton. The inadequate living and working conditions in these farms have caused serious health issues for the minor girls. NGOs in the districts of domicile and the cotton farms appear to be compromised and have not effectively espoused the twin issues of child labour and development of the area. You are appointed as the DC of Rampura and uh, we will uh, deal with these questions later. First of all, let me talk about the second paragraph. Look at the yellow terms in the second paragraph now. So, in this restrictive scenario, restrictive scenario means there are no solutions. The youth has begun to migrate. Why? Because there is abject poverty, there are no employment op opportunities. So, this is where you have to provide the solution. You have to provide solution to migration of youth. So, earlier we discussed three, four points. Now, this is your next problem here. The other one is plight of minor girls because their fingers are soft. The uh, labor contractors of a BT cotton farm from the nearby area are employing these minor girls. That is a case of child labor. They are employing these minor girls which are under 18 years of age in these cotton farms and people are sending their daughters there because they need money, they are poor, they, they are in urgent need of help, they are vulnerable. So, this is your another problem that they are minor girls. So, whatever acts you know about child labor, mention them here and then come up with a solution how to tackle the issue of child labor here. We talk about the role of NGOs when it comes to child labor, but here the uh, case study mentions that even the NGOs are not working properly. So, also they are working in the, uh, this one is done. Now, moving on to the next par paragraph. This one we have already read, this is the third paragraph. 
so uh, the first yellow term talks about serious health issues for the minor girls this means this has to be brought down on an immediate effect these girls have to be brought back from those farms and have to be put in basic schooling system regular education system and also they need to be provided with good treatment for the health issues that they are suffering with the next one is about ngos that the ngos have compromised their role so strict action needs to be taken against ngos and they need to be nudged and motivated to work for the cause of tribals to work for to work against child labor and to help people become more aware of their rights by residing in tribal areas the other one is child labor and development of area so these are two issues we've already talked about child labor the other one is development of area so what all you can do for the development of area we'll see these solutions when we answer this question now it says that you are appointed as the dc we've discussed the case study in detail the question of the case study that what all are the keywords what all are the catch points that you can use to generate solutions around now let's see what is the specific demand of the question identify the ethical issues involved so this is first this should have a separate paragraph what are the ethical issues involved this should have a separate part in your answer which specific steps will you initiate to ameliorate the conditions of minor girls of your district and to improve the overall economic scenario so when they talk about specific steps you cannot talk generally you have to mention the various laws acts that are in place and uh, what you will be using to uh, ameliorate the condition of minor girls so the first problem that has to be addressed is the con uh, addressed is the condition of minor girls the second one is about improving the overall economic scenario in the district so these are the two issues where your solution should be based around by uh, like uh, tackling poverty and tackling this issue of child labor of minor girls so you have to uh, answer this question in 250 words for 15 marks send your answers to for uh, to us for this question in the next 24 hours that is by 9 pm of 6th of april now let's begin to see how we'll answer this question unlike the previous case studies that we have studied in this uh, c is the main daily answer writing initiative this is not a case study where you will have to take a stand in the previous two or three case studies that we have discussed we were taking a stand and i had told you that you will have to write three options the last one or the first one will be balanced which you will be choosing the uh, the other one would be entirely rejected and the third one would be mostly about seeking transfer or something that can be partially accepted or rejected but here in this case study you don't have to take a stand what you have to do is give solutions and ethics is about using your knowledge of all the papers of gs paper 1 2 and 3 to your benefit use all the acts all the rules and regulations that you are aware of and that can be put here we've already discussed the uh, case study in detail now uh, let's see what will be the structure of this first of all we'll write the introduction in introduction we'll mention about the condition of tribal areas of our country or we'll uh, talk about that how these areas are left untouched by the welfare benefits that are being provided by the government and how these people become vulnerable to the vested interest of contractors or local businessmen or to the exploitators so we'll talk generally about the scenario secondly in the uh, first body paragraph we'll address the demand of the question which was about ethical issues involved it is always advisable that whether it is asked or not that you mention the stakeholders involved in an ethics case study so we'll uh, in the first body paragraph we'll talk about the stakeholders and ethical issues involved in the se uh, second body paragraph we'll give solutions which was the demand of question that what steps we we will take in the capacity of a district collector so uh, the second body paragraph provides the solutions and in the conclusion we'll uh, just summarize whatever we have written and we'll give a way forward so moving on to write the introduction for this let's see how we can elaborate the situation which is being talked about in the case study how we can highlight it in the context of general situation that prevails in india in any of the case study that you are mentioning just don't start writing the solution straight away 
use an introduction to your benefit use an introduction to quote examples in one of the previous case studies we discussed about a civil servant who was uh, dealing with an issue of using bad material in building a flyover so we talked about the recent flyover that had come down in katak or in bhuvneshwar so if you know of any examples from current affairs well and good use them in your introduction to begin answering the case study if you don't know of any examples from current affairs or any examples cannot be used use an old example or use your general knowledge and build an introduction for that so here uh, let's start by reading the introduction make sure that you notice the points that have been underlined in black here This case study reflects the condition in one of the remotest areas of the country where the welfare benefits provided by the government do not reach the needy and the local population has to give up their traditional ways of survival because whatever the way of survival they were following earlier or traditionally that is not helpful in sustaining them further sustaining their livelihood further it also highlights how these people being unaware of their rights they are not aware of right to education or about the laws of child labor and seeing no way out become vulnerable to exploitation so this sums up the case study this appraises the case study this this is your introduction for this answer so make sure that you frame your own similar introduction and add examples if you can in the body paragraph 1 we'll list down the stakeholders involved what are the stakeholders involved let's start from the people who are being exploited first of all the local population the tribals second one the youth that is migrating the migrating youth the third one the minor girls who was who are having health issues and who whose uh, girls whose fundamental rights are suffering the fourth one the exploitative contractors the fifth one ngos and civil society which is not doing its role effectively the sixth one is government it can be the local government state government central government or you can just mention the government is the next stakeholder what are the ethical issues involved or the general issues that are involved here so the first one is that uh, the issue of minor girls they are struggling because on one hand they have to serve their parents serve their families because they are uh, they are suffering from abject poverty and this is the case of this is the case with child labor in most of the cases in our country that even if you take out the child from that exploitative occupation that child is actually serving his family is providing food for his family or ensuring his own survival so where do you put these children where do you put the fate of these families whose children have been rescued from child labor so employment has to be generated on the other hand benefits have to be provided to their families on the one hand and on the other hand these people have to be put in the regular education system especially skill based education system so that they can be employed at an early age so here uh, the same is the issue with minor girls minor girls struggling with basic with two basic needs education and good uh, good health on one hand uh, versus their socio economic rights to survive and the livelihood of their of their families so um, here we can mention the issues also that whatever uh, whatever the act that is going against for uh, for example the prohibition of child labor act child labor prevention act 2016 and the right to education act 209 2009 so these two acts are being compromised here their rights are being compromised under this the parents of the minor girls and the owner of the bt cotton farm can be punished but here you have to be very vigilant very sensible because the tribals who are sending their girls for employment in these farms they might not be aware of these rights or, or these acts at all so you cannot punish the innocent but the contractors can definitely be charged so but the step will be called bl by blind follow of law by ignoring the circumstances in which the crimes like getting minor girls to work the second one is it also highlights the case of lack of development or uh, less economic development in the area in the remotest corners of the country and the government's shortcomings in providing welfare schemes let's see what are the local issues involved this will sum up your answer this will basically give you an overview whatever are the issues that you have to be dealing here the first one is poverty 
the second one is what poor people do in like these areas they start growing their own food but here the problem is that the land available is very small so they can grow food for their needs or barely for their needs but they cannot send it or sell it for getting money in return so limited land for agriculture under development of the region due to which welfare schemes are not being are not effective here the fourth one is migration of youth that is obvious when uh, when the youth of the youth of a particular area does not find opportunities in their homeland they migrate to other places the uh, fifth one is child labor of minor girls and the sixth one is compromise role of ngos we rely on the civil society to bring to light these issues and the plight of these people but the ngos are also compromising on their end so moving on let's see what can be the steps that can be taken in the capacity of a district collector so whenever you are being asked that if you were the district collector what will you do don't start writing by just saying okay i will do this i will do that write by saying that in the capacity of district collector i would take the following steps in the capacity of district collector or if i were the district collector or under my authority i would under my authority as the dc i would take these these steps to ameliorate the conditions of minor girls these are the two questions that have been asked two problems that have to be specifically addressed and to improve the overall economic scenario the first one is talking to people bring all the people together people of local population local tribal population tribals always have a local leader bring those leaders uh, back to you let them take a stand and tell them make them aware of their rights using local leaders that whatever are the acts are being violated whatever rights are not being given which uh, which are they uh, which is their inherent birth right and nudge them make them aware of their rights and motivate them to to move towards a change in the kind of occupation or in the kind of uh, living that they are having in the kind of daily lifestyle so community meeting has to be brought for generating awareness you can also involve ngos here motivate ngos you can take an action against them which have not which have been compromising on their on their role and then motivate them to in uh, to get involved with the local populace and help the district administration fight the menace of child labor and this economic development uh, carry out economic development second one awareness of government schemes this can be held in these meetings community meeting or uh, you can write that as a separate step the third one is local employment give them opportunities to sustain themselves only then this migration will stop only then child labor will stop so local employment has to be given capacity building skill development has to be carried out so that the youth of that particular area are locally employable in fact even if there is a bt cotton farm nearby or in the nearby place the local youth can be skilled to work in a skilled enterprise in the farm based industry itself promoting school education that has to be there you can provide mid day meals uh, mid day meal scheme so that nutrition nutritional levels of girls or people there or other children there do not suffer also the infrastructure of schools can be improved sixth one is the proper implementation of pds when people have enough food grains to sustain their own livelihood why will they send their children to work in such hazardous occupations and a uh, promotion of modern agriculture since the land available with them is very less in size very low in size we can have land pooling high yielding variety of seeds or precision agriculture or modern types of agriculture this body paragraph 2 explains all these points in detail so quickly the uh, talking about the first uh, community meeting we talked about you can involve ngos here and local leaders here and nudge them to work effectively to eradicate child labor and convince parents to not send their daughters into bt cotton growing farms this is your motive behind community meeting the second one is awareness of government schemes schemes like uh, mg narega uh, for employ employment or uh, the child labor prohibition of child labor act or right to education awareness has to be generated people have to be told that what you are doing is a crime and there are alternative ways available and the district administration is working with you for your development and the benefit of your children so this uh, these activities stop resorting to uh, these interest of contractors and join hands with us for the benefit of your own uh, own good the third one is local employment 
uh, as we uh, uh, because it was mentioned in the case study that there are no mining activities that are being carried out mining also employs local people so that's why it was mentioned in the case study and there are there are no business enterprises so what does uh, what does the examiner mean what does the question mean by that that there is no employment that is around and there are no ways also that are there for employment so employment has to be generated you can talk to the state government to develop small businesses here cottage industries can be developed some other industry can be set up in like by talking to the state government here and uh, this minor forest produce you know under the act for schedule uh, schedule tribes or these tribal areas or uh, forest rights act minor forest produce finds definition and minor forest produce can be sold at rates decided by the uh, by the government itself so uh, collection of minor produce uh, minor forest produce and selling it that can be carried out if minor forest produce is available otherwise cottage industries can be set up so give all solutions that you can think of don't think in the paper that okay people are doing agriculture so forest might not be available so minor forest produce might not exist give all the solutions that you can think of whatever solutions will be relevant would be uh, would be acting for your benefit the fourth one is capacity building through skill development and etc missions for prelims also we study a lot of policies of the government new and old both so when it's the time for mains just make sure that you have a list of policies that are there uh, that are being carried out for benefit of all sections of society for example for the benefit of tribals ministry of environment forest and climate change or the ministry for minorities or the ministry for tribal welfare that is carrying out many policies so make sure that you have a list prepared and you know broadly that what uh, what is the definition of these and what are the broad points that are being covered by these policies so that you can use them here the fifth one is promoting school education as i said midday meals monitoring uh, by district administration involvement of ngos uh, to send children to the schools to monitoring by ngos for the quality of midday meal schemes also and improve school education improve school infrastructure and that awareness part that motivation to the parents that can be carried out in the first step itself and you can also involve ngos in that proper implementation of welfare schemes welfare schemes have been passed by the government but uh, but the benefit is not reaching to the remotest corners of the country that's why problems like these emerge that's why case studies like this come again and again in our uh, in our, we see them in our mains paper this is also a case study from a previous year mains question paper of upsc so that has to, uh, there has to be proper implementation of pds and other welfare schemes the seventh one is promotion of modern agriculture as there was a problem of land subsistence agriculture was only carried out so use it uh, use that land carry out land pooling and uh, use uh, effective technologies more advanced technologies to carry out agriculture on that land uh, that pooled land hyv seeds uh, precision agriculture and whatever like insurance policies crop insurance that uh, that is being provided by the government or you know some loans that can be provided by government for improving the quality of soil or the quality or the kinds of crops that are produced so that can be carried out apart from all these strict measures have to be taken by district administration in the capacity of district collector you yourself will have to monitor the situation because child labor is something that has to be stopped from the day from the next day itself you uh, you uh, you become aware of it so apart from the above i'll directly supervise and see that the employment of juvenile girls on bt cotton fields is stopped so direct supervision just write that i will myself see i will i'll directly supervise also i will advise the cotton growing district collectors to take action against farmers or contractors who employ minor girls on their field so that coordination between district collectors of uh, uh, of all the districts is always there and with your contacts with the help of the that kind of coordination you can effectively handle this problem of child labor moving on to the conclusion part in ethics case studies or uh, this uh, we cannot have a way forward here because we've already given what steps will be taken and what steps will be taken in future proper implementation will be carried out so for conclusion you just have to sum up that this was the situation and this can be dealt effectively if proper implementation is carried out the cycle of poverty must be addressed properly to arrest the problem of child labor so that the families can find other means to survive so we are broadly talking about that the seed of all this problem 
of the child labor that was being carried out of the health issues of migration that is being carried out of uh, that is uh, happening there that the seed of all these issues is poverty so we are just mentioning it in the conclusion that the cycle of poverty must be addressed properly to arrest the problem of child labor so that families can find out other means to survive and uh, later there are many ngos that are working on the national and international level like bachpan bachao andolan by uh, mr kailash satyarthi child fund care etc these names of ngos you will learn uh, as you go through your gs subjects when you will be uh, very well versed with the current affairs when uh, you are reading newspapers every day you will know the names of these ngos but before your ethics paper make a note of the ngos working for different different sections of society so these ngos uh, help to eradicate child labor so things can be brought under their notice also so the with the right kind of focus from the district and state administration civil society and the determination of local populace when parents are determined to not send their daughters in such hazardous occupations the conditions of this area can be improved so this was a very simple and a uh, very simple conclusion and this completes your answer this is a very simple case study as you can see the best approach to dealing with case study is that you first go through the entire case study in the first reading and after noting down that what uh, mostly the problems will be given in the last paragraph and uh, when you've seen what are the problems here and you've seen what are the questions that have to be addressed what are the parts of this case study that have to be addressed just go back to the case study again and underline important points or problems because if you know the problem only then you can give solutions if you forget this problem of subsistence agriculture while giving your answer for case study how will you give uh, how will you generate point number 6 in your solution that uh, hyb seeds high yielding variety seeds or land pooling can be carried out so you will have to know the problem that the case study is trying to present to you it will not explicitly state that these 1 to 10 are the problems you will have to identify the problems here underline the problems on the question paper itself and then generate solution around each problem okay so this is a very simple case study case studies are very easy to deal with most of the times they do not have any philosophical background and a uh, these are very easy to score marks at you just need to intelligently know that how to use your knowledge to your advantage when it comes to addressing ethics case studies so this was about today you can send your answers in the next 24 hours to us on on this email id you can download the uh, pdf file for this presentation from the link in the description below keep working hard keep sharing your answers and all the best to you see you with another lecture discussion tomorrow